Hi, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you the correct way of using your drawing tools to enhance your artworks. This video is packed with numerous tips, tricks and proper techniques that will take your drawing to the next level. So let's get started. The very first tool I will be discussing and demonstrating the tips for is the indenting stylus. Unfortunately, you cannot buy indenting stylus from art supply store. But you can buy the alternatives that can work amazingly for indenting purposes. You can buy embossing tools or nail art dotting tools from the market. Moreover, you can make your own indenting stylus at home using very basic things like ballpoint pen or screwdriver etc. I've already made a video on that and you can check it out from the card section. There are various nail art dotting tools of different diameters available in the market. I prefer this one as it creates perfect thin and sharp lines from the one end and thicker lines from the other end. Now let's move on to the common mistakes that beginners usually do while using indenting stars. And I'm adding such strokes in this left box. When you apply and maintain a constant pressure on the stylus till the end of the stroke, the indentation becomes wider and irregular, resulting in blunt strokes. And when you proceed to shade over these indentation lines, something interesting happens that we will see in a few seconds. I'm also demonstrating the correct way of adding indentation lines in this right box. I'm adding these lines very carefully with a controlled pressure. You can clearly see in the video that I'm keeping less pressure in the start and gradually increasing for the center part and then gradually decreasing as I'm moving towards the end. This will create perfect strokes that you can add for hair, fur, metal, leather and many other thin and delicate textures. Now let's start shading and you can see that the end starts to look too blunt and bright. But for the right side, you can see that these strokes are very beautifully blended from the ends but have a bright and defined center. If you are still practicing to control the pressure over the indenting stylus and you have accidentally added these blunt ends, then don't worry, I will show you two different methods to easily fix this mistake. You can either use your dry brush with a higher angle and shade in the corners of these lines or indentations. You can also use your sharp tip B pencil or a mechanical pencil to shade inside the grooves of these strokes. Just like this. This indentation technique offers precise control to create a variety of intricate textures. For example, observe the metal texture I added in this visual drawing. I employed various pressures and added a mixture of long and short strokes to achieve a realistic metal texture. Similarly, in the black video drawing, I utilized the same indentation technique to bring out the fine details by creating the illusion of individual hair strands resulting in a more lifelike representation of hair. I also used the same indentation technique in this dog drawing and added a combination of thick and thin strokes. I replicated the unique patterns and flow of fur creating sense of depth and texture in the artwork. So from metallic surfaces to individual hair strands and animal fur, the possibilities for texture creation with indentation technique are truly endless. You can also merge it with the layering method as well. You can layer required color as a base and then add indentation lines over them to create stunning multicolor texture and details in your drawings. Just like this. Okay, so the next tool I'll be discussing is the Mono Zero Eraser. One common mistake that beginner artists often make is not cleaning their Mono Zero Eraser regularly while working, especially when transitioning from darker to lighter areas. Let's understand how and why these unintended results happen and discover simple ways to avoid them. So when using a mono zero eraser on a darker area like this without cleaning it, the graphite residue builds up on the eraser tip. Now here where's the problem arises. When you use this same eraser with its dirty tip on a lighter area, the dirty tip of the eraser transfers the graphite onto the surface, resulting in this patchiness. So to prevent this, it's very important to always clean the tip of the eraser in between the process of adding highlights and texture, especially in the lighter areas. You can rub it on a rough and textured surface like this to clean the tip and get sharp corners for thin lines and highlights. Now when you use this properly cleaned eraser, you can confidently add thick and thin highlights and texture without any dark deposits of the graphite. So always remember to pause and clean the eraser tape to prevent patchiness in your drawings. 
When you create a flat tip on your eraser by rubbing it vertically on the sandpaper, you will achieve a sharp corner all around the tip. That is perfect for adding thin highlights and you also don't have to sharpen the tip again and again. Just rotate the eraser and keep erasing until all the sharp corners are used. Additionally, you can utilize this eraser to erase the accidental shading within the grooves of the indentation lines, resulting in a brighter and crispier appearance. This technique helps enhance the definition and clarity of the indentation lines, adding an extra level of refinement to the textures in your artworks. Another common misconception beginner artists have is that mono zero eraser doesn't seem to work effectively on darker areas. When you don't clean the eraser tape in between the highlights, the graphite residue builds up on the tape, resulting in the reduced effectiveness of the eraser. As you can clearly see here that it is not erasing and picking up the extra graphite as it should have. You just have to keep this type of scraper or sandpaper near the drawing and keep cleaning the tip like this after every two or three strokes to improve the effectiveness of your eraser and to add clean and crisp highlights just like this. By adopting this practice, you will notice a significant improvement in the eraser's performance, especially when you are working on hyper realistic artworks like this. So despite common misconceptions, the mono eraser can be highly effective on darker areas when using this technique. This method has proven crucial in achieving remarkable results in my hyper realistic drawings. If you found this video helpful, then do let me know in the comment section which drawing tools you would like me to discuss the tips and tricks for. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.